Cranberries and Brianna must be science. Is that too niche of a meme? In honor of Thanksgiving being yesterday, I thought we would take a second to talk about the cranberry. They're always, or almost always on the Thanksgiving table, and I feel like people either love them or hate them. And honestly, cranberries are kind of weird. I don't know if anybody's paid that much attention to them. So, here's a bag of cranberries, in case you've never seen one in its non jellified form. Look at that crayon. Focus, focus. No, no focus on the crayon? Okay, whatever. This is a cranberry. Little red tiny berry. And they're honestly, yeah, like I said, they're honestly pretty strange. So first off, cranberries can float, which doesn't put them in as strange or unique of a category as I thought it would, because apparently a lot of other fruits can float. If you want to go test this at home, go stick a bunch of fruits in water. But cranberries float because they have four air pockets inside of them. And these four air pockets also mean that cranberries can bounce. You didn't see that, but I just threw it against the chair and it bounced off the wall. It also means that I think we can go and invent a new game. Now that I've thrown enough cranberries around, let's talk about one of the benefits of them being able to float. So this is why cranberry bogs can exist. Have you ever watched those like ocean spray commercials and you just wanted to be those farmers wading through the cranberry bog? Just me, okay. Anyhow, since cranberries can float, to harvest them, farmers will flood the field, creating cranberry bogs, and then they'll churn up those cranberries off the vine, they rise to the top, and they can collect them and take them in for processing, which is really cool because I can't think of another fruit that you can do that with. You just have to pick it yourself. But with a cranberry, you can create a fun little waden bog. I was wondering, like, do kids that love to be in a ball pit as a kid grow up to be cranberry farmers? Because that's like the adult version of a ball pit, I guess. Waiting in the cranberry bog. Oh man, I just wanna wait in a cranberry bog one day. That's a, that's a dream. It's a dream I didn't realize I had until like five seconds ago, but now it's one of my new dreams. Anyhow, cranberry bog. Floating also gave the cranberries a evolutionary advantage before people started farming them because they could find their way down into water and float downstream to a different area and grow new plants in a different area versus having all of the fruit fall right around the previous bushes and not be able to grow because there's already cranberry bushes there. If the fruit could find a way to travel and deposit their seeds elsewhere, it was a great advantage for them. So cranberries being able to float and bounce is not only fun, but also a scientific evolutionary advantage. We love double duty. I love it when scientific evolutionary advantages actually turn into like something fun. Like, I mean, cause they could be really lame advantages, but the cranberries were like, hold my beer, let me bounce and float and be wicked cool. Now let's talk about the genetics of cranberries. Just a few weeks ago, I was talking about apples and about how if you grow apples from a seed because they're cross pollinated, you're not gonna necessarily get the same type of apple from as the apple seed you planted, which is why scientists use grafting. Cranberries can actually like reproduce in all of the ways. So they do cross pollinate, just like apples do, but they can also self pollinate. So that means that you would have the cranberry bush self pollinating itself, having the same genetic material for both like, I guess the mom and dad of the baby cranberry plant, but they can also be reproduced via propagation. So you're making different clones of the cranberry plant. All of this allows kind of two good advantages. One, being able to have different genetic information from cross-pollination allows for increased genetic diversity in within the cranberry bushes, which in turn like decreases the chance they'll get killed all by a disease or get some sort of fungal infection. But you also have the ability with kind of that asexual reproduction of propagation to select out different flavors or traits 
that you want to, just like with the apples. So people farming cranberries may be looking for color, when do they ripen, what do they taste like, and can over time and generations of cranberry plants create a cranberry that does what they want. There are four, I guess more or less native species of cranberries, meaning ones that kind of evolved by themselves versus being invented by people but there are over a hundred other varieties that have been invented by a program at Rutgers University because they apparently like to propagate new cranberry species just like those freaky little apple nerds we talked about a couple weeks ago. So while you may think, oh, a cranberry is a cranberry because we don't eat cranberries as much as we eat apples, people are often inventing new cranberries as well to contribute, I guess, to that once a year eating cranberry sauce jello at Thanksgiving, unless you drink cranberry juice. And I actually really like cranberry juice, but they're kind of getting freaky with their cranberry juice too, because they're like, it's like cran apple, cran orange, cran, ooh, cran orange would be really good. Cran raspberry, cran cran, I don't know. You can find all sorts of cran grape. Finally, cranberries, if you've ever had the probably misfortune of just eating like a raw cranberry, are very acidic, which is why you put a lot of sugar into cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving but it also means you can do some fun acid-base chemistry with it, like writing some secret messages. Whee! Turn your simple cranberries into a secret message. We're harnessing the use of acids and bases. So all you have to do is draw out whatever message you wanna do using a basic solution. Right now I'm using bleach, but for a more child-friendly version, uh, mix together baking soda and water just to make a basic solution. I am out of baking soda because my husband accidentally used it all. So just draw out your message and wait for it to dry. And while you're waiting for it to dry, you can work on your cranberry or the acid solution or the secret message revealer. All I did for this was take all of the cranberries I gathered off of the floor, mix them with some water and boil and mash them together to make a cranberry juice. You could also just use store-bought cranberry juice if that's what you have on hand, or want to actually have something that you will drink after you're done doing this experiment. Once your base secret message has been dry, you can get some of your wonderful cranberry juice and reveal the secret message. Ta-da, secret message revealed. Now that I have strewn cranberries all over my filming studio, I hope you enjoyed today's video and learning a little bit more about Thanksgiving's favorite fruit. Cause it's definitely not America's favorite fruit, but it always comes out at Thanksgiving. The cranberry, they are weird, full of air, can float, can bounce, are very acidic, but are very fun. And apparently are still being invented into new species as well. So thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. Tell all your friends about it. And keep it sciencey. <laughs> Cranberries and Brianna must be science. Is that too niche of a meme? <laughs> Cranberries and science must be Brianna. <laughs> Is that too? No. Cranberries and science must be Brianna. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> 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 <laughs>